and ask questions. Okay, let's go through this. So it says, given the function f of x is equal to 1 over x plus 2, we're now asked to find f of x plus h minus f of x minus h all over 2h. So we should be recognizing this is function composition, basically. We're plugging in x plus h, right? f of x plus h. This is that's at f of 2. Why don't you plug a 2 in wherever there's an x? Right? If I said, what's f of 2, guys? So make sure you're paying attention. You're going to need this for calculus. If I said f of 2, don't we put a 2 in for x? So if I said to you, what's f of x plus h? What do you just plug in x plus h wherever there's an x? So you have to really be good at focusing your eyes in sections. So I'm going to focus on this piece and put that in down here. So f of x plus h. So that would be 1 over x plus h right there. Correct, everybody? If you don't understand, you've got to, I'm trying to help you do well next year in calculus. So we have 1 over x plus h plus 2. Is everybody got up to that? We've only done that piece, though. Now we're subtracting. Hey, you two need to focus. I'm going to do a season chart change because you guys are out of control 90% of the time. Well, every time I look over, you're canoodling. So look up here. Now let's focus on this piece. So we're going to be subtracting function f of x minus h. So once again, putting in x minus h wherever there's an x, right? So 1 over x minus h is going to go where x was, x minus h plus 2. So everybody see how that's f of x plus h minus f of x minus h. And then we have all over 2h. Okay. So then you should be saying to yourself, okay, that is my answer, but now I need to simplify it. So anytime you have a fraction divided by a fraction, shouldn't you combine like terms right here with subtraction and addition? Let's do all that. So we are going to need a common denominator, correct? So this was an advanced one. Now those bottoms don't factor. So our common denominator is x plus h plus 2 times, so least common denominator, x plus h plus 2 times x minus h plus 2. So this one needs an x minus h plus 2. So we multiply that to the top and bottom, x minus h plus 2 and x minus h plus 2. So we did that to the top and bottom. This one needs uh, x plus h plus 2, x plus h plus 2, over x plus h plus 2. So now let's just keep focusing on from here up. I'm just focusing from here up right now. So what do we have here? 1 times all that stuff is all that stuff. So we have x minus h plus 2, correct? All over the common, I'm going to write CD for common denominator. Because I'm going to write that back in in a second. Now, careful, this is subtraction. Like I said, what else people in calculus? It's their algebra. This is negative 1. Negative 1. Negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times positive h is negative h. Negative 1 times positive 2 is negative 2. And that's all over the common denominator. So now that we have a common denominator, we can combine our tops. We can combine our numerators, combine like terms. We've already distributed the negative through. x minus x is 0. I did have one person get this right. Negative h minus h is how many h's? Negative 2 h's, okay? And then we have 2 minus 2, 0. So we have negative 2h over the common denominator. Now I'm going to write it out. That's x plus h plus 2 times x minus h plus 2. So that was just literally the yellow up. And then we have that all divided by 2h. So now you say, okay, now I have a fraction divided by a fraction. Dividing fractions is easy as pi. We flip the second fraction and we multiply. So this is 2h over 1. So we'll flip the second, so that would be multiplying by 1 over 2h. Now we just simply, because multiplying fractions you can multiply straight across, so we would divide out common factors first before we multiply. 
2 eighths over 2 eighths is 1 over 1, correct? Isn't that all it divides out? So left on top is negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1. On bottom, we have that stuff. So we have x plus h plus 2 times x minus h plus 2. So we should probably distribute out that bottom and combine like terms. So let's do that. Our last step. But does everybody see how this is going? It's just a lot of algebra, a lot of craziness. You will have tons of problems like this in calculus. So we have negative 1 over x times x is x squared. x times negative h is negative hx. x times positive 2 is positive 2x. Is everybody good? I'm going to change colors. Good. h times x is positive hx. h times negative h is negative h squared. h times positive 2 is positive 2h. Changing colors again. Positive 2 times x is positive 2x. Positive 2 times negative h is negative 2h. Positive 2 times positive 2 is plus 4. So on top, we still have our negative 1. And then on bottom, we're going to be... What the heck? And on bottom, we're going to combine like terms. x squared, any other x squareds? Nope, so we have x squared. Crossing out as I go. Negative h, x plus hx is 0. Positive 2x plus 2x is 4x. Negative h squared, any other h squared? Nope. Negative h squared. Those uh, cancel out, whatever, and then plus 4. So now we have literally simplified this out Whoa. all the way. That was a hard problem, uh, algebraically wise. Try this on your whiteboard, and then um, I'll give you a second, and then we need to get started on today's lesson because it's not. Easy. So we see that our function is x to the negative 1, so this will be, um, sorry, this will be 3 plus h to the negative 1, that's f of 3 plus h, and then minus 3, f of 3 would be 3 to the negative 1 all over h. And so then you'd say, okay, this is the same thing as 1 over 3 plus h to the first, correct? Minus 1 over 3, and that's all divided by h. So then you would need a common denominator. So this one will multiply by 3 plus h over 3 plus h. This one will multiply by 3 over 3. So now we multiply straight across. Right here we get 3, and then minus, and we'll distribute that negative 1 through. So minus 3 minus h, that's where I made my arrows, didn't distribute the negative. And that was all over 3 times 3 plus h. So, and that's all divided by h. Dividing fractions easy as pi. You flip the second fraction. Oh, we should combine like terms up here too, but we can do this all at once. Times by 1 over h. Flip the second and multiply. So those become 0. So then we have negative h divided by h is 1. So our answer is negative 1 over 3 times 3 plus h. Some of you distributed it through, which is fine. Good job. Okay, those were just good practice algebra, uh, algebraically. Okay, so we're going to start out by, uh, we're going to do a unit which is going to shift gears quite a bit. It's called sequences and series. Um, so we're going to be dealing with arithmetic sequences and series. There's a good chance you're going to want to take a few notes today. Um, okay, so it is sometimes helpful to represent a situation with a sequence of numbers. There are different types of nu um, numerical sequences. So in an arithmetic sequence, which is what we're dealing with today, arithmetic, the differences between any two consecutive terms is always the same number. You can build a, an arithmetic sequence by adding the same number to each term. So let's build an arithmetic sequence for an example here. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4. Aren't I just adding 1 each time? Adding 1 each time. Does everybody see that's an arithmetic sequence. So it says the difference from one term to the next is always the same. So I could keep going on forever. Does everybody see how this is an arithmetic sequence? I added one each time to get from one term to the next. So once again, an arithmetic sequence is a sequence in which the difference between consecutive terms, consecutive means one right after the next, is constant. So the differences will be the same. 
So what's 4? Four? 4 minus 3. 1. What's 3 minus 2? 1. What's 2 minus 1? One. 1. So looking at this, all the differences are the same, so we know it's arithmetic. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. So this is how we have an arithmetic sequence written out. Um, an arithmetic sequence with a starting value A. So A is going to be our starting value. It's also called A sub 1, which means the first term in our sequence. Um, and then a common difference of D is a sequence of the form this. So it will be of this form, A comma A plus the difference. And then we'll have A plus 2 times the difference because this is 2 over. Does that make sense? This is 2 and above A. So you're adding the difference twice, guys. 2D, you're adding the difference twice to get there. Does that make sense, everybody? And then this is A plus 3D because you're adding the, dif uh, the difference three times to get to this term. So that's being really technical. Um, but that's just what a sequence has the form of. So everybody look at this first example here. 1, 2, 3, 4. This is arithmetic because... There's a common difference of one. We just did this example. So this is arithmetic. This one would be considered our starting value in our sequence. So looking right here, here is a sequence of numbers. Is it arithmetic? Well, let's check our differences. 18 minus 13 is 5. 13 minus 8 is 5. 8 minus 3 is 5. So it is a common difference of 5, so it's arithmetic. Does everybody understand? A is my starting value. This sequence started at 3. Everybody good? Okay, so do problems 10, 1 through 10 on the worksheet. You're answering, are these sequences arithmetic? We check that by differences, looks like. Okay, so everybody back up here, we need to get some notation in place so that we're not confused when I'm giving you some formulas and stuff of what I'm talking about. So look at number 1. 2, 3, 5, 8. So we know this is arithmetic. What was the common difference? Is it arithmetic? No, we said no to this one. Okay, so it's not arithmetic. Sorry about that. So there's no common difference. That's why we know it's not arithmetic. So this would be a sub 1. a sub 1 just means our first term in our sequence. Everybody good with that? a sub 2 means our second term in the sequence. a sub 3 means the third term in the sequence. And a sub 4 means the fourth term in the sequence. Does everybody see how it's working? So if I said to you a sub n, that means whatever the nth term in a sequence. Does everybody understand? So if I said a sub 20, I would be saying give me the 20th term. Or the 20th term is this. Does that make sense? What? a sub n. Oh, just, yeah. Oh, a sub n. Sorry. So that would be the nth term in a sequence. Any term in a sequence. Does everybody understand? Some notation, so think about it. A sub n is the nth term in a sequence. So I'm going to write it out like this. So if we have some a sub n, which could be any term in a sequence, a sub n minus 1 will be, the n minus 1 just means the term before a sub n. Does it make sense? n minus 1 comes before n. So a sub n minus 1 just means the term before a sub n. Then a sub n plus 1 just means the term after a sub n. The next term, in other words. Does everybody understand some notation? So if I said to you a sub n is 5, what would a sub n minus 1 be? 3, right? It's not the term that comes before a sub n. Then what would a sub n plus 1 be? If a sub n is 5, a sub n plus 1 is 8. Everybody good with that? Okay. That's usually what gets people. Okay, so I want you guys to give it a shot. So if I said to you, write a formula. You don't have to be perfect. You're not knowing the correct notation. I want you to write a formula the best of your abilities. You can write out in words. It doesn't matter. Write a formula to find any term in a sequence or the next term or whatever. So given this, how can we find the next term in the sequence? With a formula. So tell me. Ready to go? Yeah. So this one... I want you to write a formula for this one and write me a formula for this one. Basically, write me a formula to be able to find the next term. Do you get what I'm saying? No or yes? So this is what I've seen some people do on this one. Um, so Amelia, uh, we had a few people over in this group. Actually, I think pretty much the whole group did the same thing for this one. 
Um, they said that they've called this X, right? Yeah. And then how did you do your explanation? You said that A sub oh. N was, well, didn't you call this one X? What was your explanation again? Oh. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing where you're going with that. Perfect. Okay, now I saw Abby do this. She said A sub N, right? So we said A sub N plus one. So you were saying the term plus one more to get to the next. Is that making sense, that one? So here would be a, that is correct technically. So here's what I was thinking that we would probably see some people say is what Abby was saying. So she was saying you could take the formula for this is take the previous term. So we didn't write this. Uh, we need to write it as a previous term. Can we take each previous term and add one to get to the next term? So a sub n minus one, that means you take the previous term and you add one. Does everybody understand? So that is just being a little bit more because a sub n means the term you're on. So a sub n minus 1 ta means take the previous term and add 1. Take the previous term, add 1. Does that make sense, everybody? You would read this. Take the previous term, add 1. Does everybody see it? Okay, so then over here, uh, I just I started this off. So Abby was saying, okay, are we adding 5 each time? Adding 5. So we could write a formula as a sub n minus 1. You take the previous term and add 5. Does everybody see how I did that? So and this just means you take the previous term and add five. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, awesome. So that was a recursive definition. So a recursive definition for a sequence, and you're gonna see this on the homework. So you're gonna want to take some notes. So that was a recursive definition. This is really important that you understand the difference of recursive and explicit definition. So a recursive definition or a recursive formula has two parts. First of all, it has to have an initial condition. So um, you have to have a starting point with a recursive definition. So you say my first term in my sequence is this. And then a sub n means any term in a sequence. a sub n, once again, that means any term in a sequence will be, so it's equal to the previous term plus the common difference, which we just did an example of, right? Previous term plus the common difference. So your formula will be a sub n minus 1, the previous term. That literally just means the previous term plus the difference. Um, so a recursive formula, guys, think about it. If you were going to use a recursive formula, you would need the previous term to actually get the next term, correct? Because you take the previous term and add. So recursive definitions aren't usually helpful unless you're finding something immediate, pretty close to the first few, uh, first few terms in your sequence. Um, <clears throat> All right, so once again, a recursive definition I we don't usually use because you have to have the previous term to find the next term in the sequence. So this formula is not only somewhat helpful. Um, so if I said to you find the 43rd term of this sequence, that'd be a sub 43. So then in the formula, that's a sub 43 minus 1, which is a sub 42, correct everybody? So we would need a sub 42 plus 2. So what people try to do on accident is they think that that's like you can calculate that. a sub 42 means I need the 42nd term. Does that make sense? Do we know the 42nd term? No. So do you see how this recursive definition would not be helpful in something like this? We'd have to go in through and figure out the 42nd term. And if we know that, we might as well add 2 one more time and get to the 43rd time. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, so just making sense of that here. So looking at number 11, though on the homework it will have you, it will say write a recursive definition. So you have to know what that is. So let's look at number 11. 12, 14, 16, 18. Everybody good? So if we were going to write a recursive definition, are we taking the previous term and adding 2? So I wrote a recursive definition as such. a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus 2. And you have to say a sub 1 it has to have an initial condition equals 12. So our starting point has to be 12 so that you know you're doing, because we could add 2 to 1, right? So we have to know that the starting point is 12, so then that's where we get the rest of our sequence from. Everybody good with that, writing a recursive definition? 
Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Any questions on recursive definitions? We all good? Okay. All right, so now an explicit definition is way more useful. So an explicit definition will literally be allow you to be able to calculate any term in a sequence, which is more what Emilio is doing over there. So an explicit definition, once again, you do not need to know the previous term. An explicit definition is a straightforward formula that will allow you to find any term in a sequence and you don't have to know any other term. You only have to know the common difference and then your starting point. So this is the formula we're going to use more often. So once again, a sub n means we can find any term in a sequence, and that's equal to a, which is really a sub 1 for our first term, plus n minus 1 times the common difference. So you won't even need to know the previous term. So we'll be plugging in, we're finding this term, and I'll explain why this makes sense when we get an example. It's hard for me to explain it with variables of why this formula makes sense in a second. I'll make sense of it. So we need the initial condition, and then we want to know how many differences we're going to be taking, how many times we're going to be adding the difference. Does that make sense? And then the n minus 1 makes it because we don't want to add this first term's difference, so that n minus 1, if we wanted the 43rd, we'd be doing the difference 42 times. Does that make sense? Okay. So this is a lot more helpful because it allows you to find any term in a sequence without knowing previous terms. So let's all look at number 11. And because we couldn't answer it, because we didn't know the 42nd term with the recursive definition, now that we know an explicit definition, we can find any term in a sequence very easily. So there's my formula. So we have 11. First of all, the first thing you would need to know is what is my common difference? What are we adding? 2, correct, everybody? 18 minus 16 is 2. 2, 2. So why are we adding 2? We want to get to the 43rd term. So we're going to use this formula. We started with 12. So a sub n, we're doing a sub 43. We want the 43rd term. Our initial condition was 12. We started with 12 plus, and then we're going to do 43 minus 1. So that would be 43 minus 1. So why is it 43? n was 43. 43 minus 1. So 43 times by the common difference, which is 2. Now, why does this make sense, guys? We're adding 2, right? How many times do we need to add 2? To get to the 43rd term, we did it. Oh, I meant to write 42, though. Sorry, 43 minus 1 is 42. We added it 42 times to get to the 43rd term because this counts as our first term, so we can't account for that. Does that make sense? We've already, the 2, we're not going to add 2 to that term is not going to count in the formula. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, so then what is a sub 43? So it's 96. So guys, if we added 2 uh, 42 times, that would put us on our 43rd term. You get that, right? And we would be at 96. But we did it using a formula. That's a linear formula. So we all see how to do that. You just use the formula, plug it in, basically, so find any term. Yeah. Well, the formula for an arithmetic sequence will always be the same. So if you know this formula, you can calculate any term in any sequence. That's arithmetic. I'll give you a different formula for ones that are not as arithmetic, which will be next time. So let's practice number 12. Let's do it again. So it says, with the 43rd term of this sequence. So to know, like, we've got to know our difference, our common difference. So you'll do, once again, you'll do 3.1 minus 13.1. So that's negative 10. This minus this is negative 10. This minus this is negative 10. So our common difference is we're subtracting 10 each time, everybody. Do you want to sit and subtract 10 42 times? No, you don't. So you want to use your formula. So you say, I know the formula is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times b. Okay, so let's plug that in. We're doing a sub 43. We're finding the 43rd term in the sequence. a sub 1, our initial condition was 13.1. We started with that. Now we're going to add the difference 42 times. Now our difference was negative 10, so times negative 10. So we're basically... Subtracting 10 42 times. 
Does everybody understand that? Why the formula makes sense? Okay, so you'll calculate that. Oh, yeah, so that was 43 minus 1, which is 42. Everybody see where I'm plugging this in? Should I show my work better on the next one? Are we making sense? Okay, so did you get negative 406.9? So A sub 43 means our 43rd term will be at negative 406.9. This is a formula you're going to want to remember. Okay. Yeah, it is. But it makes total sense, right? Yeah. You're starting here and you're going to subtract 10 42 times. Do you see how wide the formula makes sense over there? It's a really cool thing that all of them make sense. Okay, so how about before lunch? We have six minutes. I'm going to let you practice 11 through 20. Do practice because I'm going to move on after lunch from this piece. Oh, I thought through it, which is different than the long time. Your way is totally great on this. Um, but watch up here so this might help. you might say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I might like it better that way. Or you might like your own way better. So I think most of you did this. I went around and saw some of you doing it. Most of you did 49 minus 23 divided by 2. And then added that on. That is great. This is how I did it. I set it up as an algebra problem because to me, it makes more sense to do it. And that makes total sense. But I just said, okay, I don't know what this is, so I'm going to call it x. So I know that 49 minus x, this minus this, better be equal to this minus this, correct? This minus this better be equal to this minus this. Does everybody see what I'm saying? This minus this better be the same as this minus this if it's arithmetic. So now solve for x using algebra. You add 23, right? Add 23. So what do we get? Seventy-two. Sorry, I'm gonna write it better. Seventy. Seventy-two. We have 72 minus x equals x, so then we add x. Is everybody following me? So we have 72 equals 2x, divide for x, divide by 2. Yeah. And then um, we get 36. So I solve for x using algebra. Just a different way of thinking through it. Does everybody understand that? Okay. So I'm going to give you, like, try a couple, like, two more of those, and then we're going to move on. If you've already done them all, then you're good. See if you can do it. If you've already done them all, you should be trying 33. That one can be a little bit tricky. Okay, so let's look at this one that's a little bit more advanced here. So your old way, will that work? The way that you did a second ago? Just curious. Yeah? Yeah. Good point. Yes, you just got to think about it. Awesome. Yeah, you absolutely can do it by, if you divide it by 3. So here's how I did it. Once again, I set mine up as an algebra problem. 82, this minus this better be equal to this minus this, correct? Because the differences should always be the same from the term that comes before the term above it. So I said 82. Hey, are you watching this? Are you canoodling again? 82 minus x equals x minus 100. You see why I did it that way? Because it's not a true statement. Shouldn't that be true? Okay. Perfect. So we don't need to continue with that. Then it's just algebra, right? Yeah, you can see it. X will be 91. Okay. So that would be... Wait a minute. That's only one answer. What the heck am I not thinking of here? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is so, there we go. That is right. This one won't work because, oops, 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 oops. Because X isn't going to be the same, right? We solved for X being the same. Before it was the same, that makes sense. So we would want to think about it by looking at how much distance is between, split it up evenly, and then figure out from there. Yeah. Yeah, you would. You're right. Good point. Okay. Awesome. Glad I made that error so that you don't make that error when doing your homework.
Um, we're not going to do that one. Okay, we need to go on to the next piece here. So you guys understand arithmetic sequences. Now we're going to talk about an arithmetic sequence versus an arithmetic series. So a sequence is a sequence of numbers, just a bunch of numbers, and they're going to be commas in between. So, for example, a sequence of numbers is 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. That's what a sequence is that has commas. It's just a bunch of numbers. A series is a bunch of numbers being added, the sum of a bunch of numbers. So this is an example of a series versus a sequence. So 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15 plus 8. So a series is the sum of those numbers. Does everybody understand the difference between a sequence and a series? So there's a couple different vocabulary words you need to pay attention to. Finite versus infinite. So a finite is, um, you know the start and the end. There's an exact number that we're talking here. So finite means 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. It's finite because we know the start, we know the end. Does that make sense, everybody? It doesn't continue forever. There's a start to the sequence, there's an end to the sequence. That's what makes it finite. So an infinite, an infinite sequence would be like 3, 7, 11, 15, comma, dot, dot, dot. That means we can keep going. We can keep adding 4 or whatever. You know what I mean? Keep adding the common difference each time. Forever, right? We can keep going. If those dot, dot, dots are there, it's infinite. We can just keep adding. Does that make sense? Not adding. I mean, keep going with numbers. What? Yeah, there's a star. It just continues forever. So it's infinite. So it's just going to keep getting larger and larger by the common difference. Does that make sense? Infinite, it's never stops. We don't know the end. There is no end. We can add. We can keep adding on forever, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, it could, absolutely. So if this had a comma and then a dot, 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 that means we don't know where it started or ended. But we know that there was a common difference of four. But it was just infinite because there was no, on this example, you just asked about there would be no start or finish. Good question. So a finite series means you know exactly where your start is and where your end is. So it's finite, you know the start and end. That's something that we can find the sum of because we know exactly where to start adding and where to stop adding. So a finite series we can find. An infinite series, even though there's those addition signs, we can't actually add them because aren't we going to just be adding forever? Like we don't know when to stop adding, right? There's dot dot dot, so we have no idea. We can keep adding, keep adding. We're just going to keep adding infinitely. Does that make sense? So just going to approach affinity at, we're going to be adding these up. So we will not be able to find the sum of an infinite series. So when dealing with a finite, a finite arithmetic series, um, you could, oh sorry, what did I say? When dealing with a finite, that sentence doesn't make sense, does it? When dealing with a finite arithmetic series, since you have the start and end terms, you can find the sum. I'm kind of bad at English, that just kind of wasn't a very good sentence. That's okay. You understand. All right. So here is the formula. So if you can find the sum, so if it is finite, then we can find the sum because we know exactly when to start adding and when to stop adding. So here's the formula. Write it down. So it says the sum S of n, so that just means the sum of a certain number of terms on a finite arithmetic series is S of n, so the sum of a certain number of terms is equal to n divided by 2 times a sub 1, the start, plus a sub n, the end of where you're adding. So the end term of where you're adding. So a couple of things that you need to know. So n is the number of terms you're adding up, like I said right here. And then a sub 1 is the first term in the, seri um, the series. So that's your first term in your series. And a sub n will be the last term in your series that you're adding up. So go to your third page, uh, second page on the front. We're now to the front of the next part of the worksheet. So here we go. So let's find the sum of this finite series. So it's a series and it's arithmetic. Are we adding two each time? Everybody? So you say, oh, this is an arithmetic series. Okay, so let's find the sum. How many terms are we summing up? One, two, three, four, five, correct? So we're going to say we're summing up five terms. Our n is 5, s of n, so n is 5, so we're doing 5 over 2 times a sub 1. This is our a sub 1, um, so that's 1, and then this is our a sub 5, correct? a sub 5, that's our fifth term. So 1 plus 9, and now we'll simplify it. So at the sum of those five terms is... 
10 times 5 is 50. 50 divided by 2 is 25. So if we were to add those up by hand, we could calculate or just add them up, but this is using the formula. Does everybody understand? Super simple, but this one was the easy one. Hold on. Example. Okay, you are not going to want on number two. So we know the formula. We say, oh, this is arithmetic. I can see I am adding three each time, correct? So we're, this is an arithmetic series. So we can actually sum these up. But we need to know if we're going to use the formula, and we are. Because we don't want to have to write this all out and then add them up by hand. That will take too long, especially when we get into some huge ones. So what you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, I'm going to use my formula for sum of an arithmetic series, S of n. Now, n means the number of terms you're summing up. So we've got to think about this. Now, this is how I personally, like, we don't want to have to keep adding 3 until we get to 26 and then count the number of terms, correct? So let me try to make sense of this, of how I do this to you. So this is how I think through it personally, okay? You guys got to pay attention because this part is really confusing for students usually. So, pretend like we're not working in threes for a second. How much distance to get from 5 to 26? Like, how, what are, how much distance is between 5 and 26? 21, correct? Does everybody understand? But now that was working in one. That was adding one each time. Now, are we going in groups of three? We're adding three each time, correct? So we've got to divide that 21 by groups of three because we're splitting it up into groups of three. Does that make sense? So that would be seven. So we had to add three seven times to get to 26. Does everybody understand? Um, that's the sum of seven terms, but that doesn't include five. Because I was adding three seven times from five. Yeah, uh, that would include 26, but so we haven't included five. So we're summing up eight terms, because that was at to five, you took an added three, seven times. Does that make sense? So we're adding up, we're summing up eight terms. Everybody good with that? That's the hardest thing for people to get. So we're summing up eight terms. Let's plug it in. Eight over two, divided by, I mean, sorry, times by a sub one, which is five, plus a sub n, which is 26. So, calculate it, and we get 124. So, at the sum of those eight terms was 124. That's our sum. So, if you did that by hand, you could check your work, but we're going to get into some big ones that you wouldn't want to do. Yes? Can you also use the first That's exactly what we did. Yep, that's exactly what we did. I just said it in different Wait, that's exactly what it is. Oh, no, that's exactly what we did. 26 minus 5 divided by the common difference. Perfect. So let's do number 3. Do you want to go back? Okay, so I said once again, so we, would, we are going, okay, we can add this up because it's finite, but how many terms are we summing up? So we need to know the number of terms. So uh, you would do 44 minus 4, correct? So that's our distance. So I just said it a little differently. What's 44 minus 4? 40. 40. Now what's our difference? Like what are we adding each time or subtracting? 5, right? So divided, now we're not working in groups of 1, we're working in groups of 5. So divided by 5, how many times did we have to add 5 to get to 44? Eight. Good. Now that didn't include, we started at four. So that was, we have to include the term four. So that would be nine terms. We're summing up nine terms. Because that was just eight more times we had to add five. So we're summing up nine terms in this series. So then we have nine over two times a sub one, which is four, plus a sub n, which is 44. So the sum of nine terms for this particular Good. Correct. Perfect. 216. Everybody good? Yes. The formula is n divided by 2. We're summing up 9 terms. n is the number of terms we're summing up. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Yep, that's our formula right up here. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, are we good to practice those for a minute? Okay, so then we'll get into, so we don't need to do number four, you guys are good. Okay, awesome, I'm just gonna let you do five through seven, or anyways, that group right there. One through seven-ish, that group, some in that group. And then we're gonna keep doing the same thing, but some different notation, and kind of going backwards too. So look up here. So it says, you can use, so we're finding sums right now, we're summing. So it says you can use Greek, cap, Greek capital letter sigma. So that little fancy E, looking thing is called a sigma, that really just means the sum. So the sigma means sum. So you can use Greek capital letter sigma to indicate a sum. So whenever you see that, you say, I'm taking a sum, just like we were just doing, to indicate a sum. With it, you use limits, we'll get to that in a minute, to indicate how many terms you are adding up. So we you know how a second ago we were at, like, oh, we're adding up six terms. Like that's what it's talking about. So our lower limit, this is called our lower limit. And this is called our upper limit, and that'll just be the number of terms you're summing up. So if we were summing up six terms, it'll be one to six. Does that make sense, everybody? Um, okay. You write the limits below and above, uh, below, oh, wow, below and above sigma to indicate the least and greatest values of n. So this gives an example, which is not arithmetic, so I don't love that fact, but a couple of things to note. So if you ever have summation notation, so you'll maybe want to make note of this, this little picture that I drew over here. So if we want to know the number of terms we're summing up, it'll be at one to the number of terms we're summing up. So if we were summing up six terms, it would be n equals one to six. Then this is going to be the explicit formula. Now remember, an explicit formula is the formula that we just learned, correct? Let's write it down. We just learned an explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence, which was a sub one plus n minus one times d, correct? So given that explicit formula, you can find any term in a sequence, correct? Given that explicit formula, you can find any term in a sequence, okay. Or vice versa, okay. Awesome. So then it says for an infinite series, this in summation notation, it'll have an infinity as the upper limit. So that just means it's continuing forever. Does that make sense? We're not just summing up six terms. This is an infinite series. We don't know the end. Okay. So... It says to find the number of terms in a series um, written in summation form, subtract the lower limit from the upper limit and add one. So yeah, that should make sense because we have to account for the first one. So one to six. So how many terms are we summing up? Six um, and whatnot. So we, it says subtract the lower limit from the upper limit. One minus lower limit. Does it say the lower limit from the upper limit? I always do it the other way, six minus one plus one. And the number of terms in the series above. So looking up here, guys, we start at three up to 108. So you can't say that that's 108 terms that we're summing up. Does everybody understand? So what you would do is 108 minus three is whatever, and then plus one. So obviously 108 minus three is 105 plus one. We're gonna be summing up 106 terms. Does that make sense to everybody? So the one to six makes it easy to see, but if it's not a one there, you gotta think for a second. Okay, let's look at number eight, yes. So I'm going to four on this first part of my Uh-huh. Um, wouldn't it be using the recursive definition? Well, no, because um, the recursive definition, you still have to know the previous term. So for this one, we would not know like what the previous term was. Good question. Okay, here we go. So at number eight, it says write each, and I just uh, have these things on the slide to refer back to, which we just learned. So write an arithmetic series in summation notation. So we gotta take and write this in summation notation. So everybody look at number eight. So the reason we can write it in summation notation is because it sums. This means the same thing as addition signs. Everybody good with that? So now how many terms are we summing up? One, two, three, four, correct? So our lower limit will be one, and our upper limit would be four. And these were summing up four terms. Now we're going to put in our explicit formula here, like I said, which we know this is our explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence. So we have a sub one, which is four. And then we have plus n minus one times, what's the common difference? We're adding four each time, so times four. 
Now we'll just simplify it and write it in the most simplified form. So we have the sum from 1 to 4 of this particular sequence. So we will have 4 plus 4n minus 4. I distributed 4 in. So once again, I'm just showing all my work the first time. So our final answer will be 1 to 4, and then let's write it in like a line. So 4n and then 4 minus 4, 0. So this would be our final answer. This means the exact same thing as this. This is written out in summation notation. So we can, they go hand in hand. They're literally equal, they're just written differently. Does that make sense? Yeah, and then we'll go backwards in a second. Like, so given this information, we could figure out all of these numbers. We plug in one, four times one is four. You see how the first one came from that? You plug in two, four times two is eight. You see how that's how we got the second one? Does that make sense? So it's just writing it backwards in a different form. Does that make sense? So we could generate this actual numbers from this if we were given it and asked to go that way. Okay, let's do number nine. So write an arithmetic series and summation notation. So we would say, okay, I know that this literally means we're taking the sum of how many terms. This is what we're going to have to think about again. So negative five minus ten. We're talking distance. So or you could say from ten. I like to say it like this. From 10, how much did we have to add to get to negative 5? 15. There's a distance of 15, correct? So there's 15, but we're not working in ones. So how many terms are we summing up? Well, what's the difference here? 3. We're subtracting 3, correct? So 15 divided by 3 is 5. So we're summing up 5 terms here. So n equals 1 to 5. And then we'll put in our explicit formula that generates these numbers, so that's a sub 1, which is 10, our starting point, plus n minus 1 times the common difference, which is actually negative 3, right? Times negative 3, we're subtracting 3. So our sum of n equals 1 to 5, let's simplify this, multiply in negative 3. So that'll be negative 3n plus 13, right? Negative 3 times negative 1 is plus 3, 10 plus 3. There's our answer. Once again, this is literally the exact same thing as this. They're just written in different notation. Are we all good? To practice a few by ourselves. Okay, so A through 13. That's a sigma, which just means the sum. Now let's go the other way. So it says actually find the sum. So let's look at number 14. So you say, I know that if I actually want to actually find the sum, I need the sum formula, correct everybody? Yeah. This is actually pretty easy. So we need to know how many terms are we summing up? The four. sum of four terms, one to four, four terms. Now n is four, so we'll be doing four over two. Now we don't know right now a sub one, correct? But we know our explicit formula. So if we plug in 1, that's what generates our formula is plugging these things in. So 1 minus 1, 0. So our first term would have been, a sub 1 would have been 0. So we have our 0 plus. Now we don't know a sub n, which really means a sub 4, correct? Yeah. We don't know a sub 4, so let's plug in 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. So a sub 4 is 3. So 0 plus 3. So that's going to be our sum. We're just using the formula because remember this is literally the exact same thing as if we were to write it all out. Does everybody understand? Okay. So if we calculate this, we get 6. The sum of those four terms was 6. So we just had to generate the first term and the last term in our sequence. By using our explicit formula, which gives us any term in a sequence. Does that make sense? So let's do number 15. So we started at 2 to 6. Okay, interesting. So how many terms are we going to be summing up? 6 minus 2 is 4. But that doesn't include our initial condition, so that's sum of 5 terms. Does everybody understand? So we're summing up 5 terms. So, once again, to use this formula, I need to know the first term in my sequence. 
Here's our explicit formula. So to generate our first term, plug it in. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 1. So a sub 1 is 3. Our last term is if we plug in 6, so that would be a sub 5. That's the last term in our sequence, plug in 6. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 minus 1 is 11. So we know our initial and we know our last. So now we can use our formula. n is 5, because we're summing up 5 terms. 5 divided by 2. a sub 1 is 3 plus 11. So the sum of those 5 terms is 35. Well, we can just sit here and we can calculate this entire thing written out. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. That's the first one in our thing. So 3 comes next, right? We plug in 3. Just saying, like I'm trying to show you where it comes from. So we plug in 3. 3 times 2 is 6 minus 1 is 5. We plug in 4. Does that make sense? We plug in 5. So now we're plugging in 6. Isn't that the last one? So plug in 6. So, yeah, 13. 11, I meant. So we know our initial, we know our end. So this is literally the exact same thing we just did, but it's written out in summation notation. Does that make sense, everybody? You sure? I'm better at that. Okay, so you have a couple minutes to do right now. You don't need to do, um, yeah, practice right now, 14 through 22. Oh, I'm just That's all you need to be able to do the online homework. Ignore that.